we're going to be going over a tutorial for the Van Gogh aerial today. Um, a lot of you probably think there's really no need for a tutorial on this move. Uh, as with most aerials, it's kind of a do as you see kind of thing. And that may be true, but I see this move done in a lot of videos and it's either not done properly or it's not done in the right context um, that it was intended to be. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of subtleties in this move, so we're going to be going over that. Now we're going to have two different sections to this. The first one, um, if you don't know the move already, we're going to be going over that. Go over the, the basic mechanics of the move itself. And then the next section we're going to be going over you know, some of the general tips, uh, subtleties, and some of the finer points of the move to get it looking its best. Okay, so let's go into the basic mechanics of the move. A um, little bit of history lesson for this. Uh, the move was created by Lucifer and the general concept and thought process that went into this move when he was creating it was he wanted to make an aerial transfer starting from one hand, do an aerial and catch it in the opposite hand as close to the head or neck area as possible. And what you see today is the Van Gogh is what he came up with. Um, also, Droop Dog, uh, he was one of the first people to see the move before uh, Lucy put it out there. Um, and he may or may not have been the person to name the move. Um, Lucy's a little bit senile in his old age, so can't really remember if uh, Droop named, named the move or not. It is a clever name, though. Um, as you all know, Van Gogh did cut off a uh, lower portion of his earlobe uh, during a his emotional love-hate relationship with fellow artist Gauguin and he proceeded to um, give the severed earlobe to uh, one of the many prostitutes he uh, was in love with during his lifetime. Anyways, back to the move. The move can is the high link ability on this move. You can link this move to basically anything which makes it great for routine work. Uh, it's a great ending for a routine I prefer to see it in the middle of a routine. I think it looks a lot better that way. Um, you can do it from the safe handle or the bite handle, just depending on which way you want the blade facing after the move. So I usually always go into this move from a full twirl. So I'm going to be teaching it to you from the safe handle position. Now you're going to be in this position here, index on bottom, thumb on top of the outside edge of the safe handle. And uh, what you're going to do here is a single flip. So you're going to dip down and just give it a single aerial rotation over your right shoulder. You're going from your right hand, throwing it over your right shoulder. As you're doing this, your left hand is going to go behind your head with your hand, you know, in the over your right shoulder as well. Now as I said, it's a single rotation, you can go for more, uh, but for reliability's sake, let's go with the single. Um, I'm going to show this to you kind of not behind my head, just for clarity's sake, on um, the initial run through, but as I said, you're doing a single rotation and flip. So you toss this into the air, and this is going to do a single rotation as the blade clears, and the safe handle is coming around, remember that your hand is going to be behind your head and it's going to be in this position, kind of an upside down grip kind of catch. Um, thumb out and fingers out like that. As that safe handle comes around and hits, momentum is going to carry that bite handle into the closing position. Then you grip your hand around it and you catch it like that. Um, like I said, obviously your hand is behind your head during that point. So once again, you dip down, you do this single rotation here. Your left hand is going behind your head. The safe handle is going to hit. Now allow time for the bite handle to come and meet up with it and then close your hand around it and you're going to catch it in this position here and that's the final proper catching position uh, to have the blade pointed downwards and like I said you want to have a little bit of uh, timing here as that handle hits and momentum don't catch it and grip it because then the handle can't meet up and you know don't catch it like that and you know catch it like that and then 
move your fingers out. You want a clean, solid catch. So it's going to hit, allow that extra second for the handle to meet up, and then get your solid grip on it. Okay, so here's some uh, general tips I can give you on this and uh, you know, some of the finer points of the move. The toss itself, you know, it's not a, like I said, single revolution. It's a soft flip. You're not hucking it back behind your shoulder. It's a soft, controlled flip, um, and that's timing and feeling individual to each person. So it, that's, you know, aerials in itself. you got to work on that yourself, find out how much force, how, how much pressure, how hard, how soft you have to throw it. It's an individual thing, so work on that, and then bring it to the band go. Um, uh, another tip is from the initial toss point, I like to think of, a, think of it as a straight line. Point A to point B, right over my shoulder, into the back wall behind me. That's the way I think of it. Point A to point B, right over my shoulder. Because you are aiming for you know, a general area. You're aiming for this area right here, right above the shoulder, right next to the ear. You don't want to you know, toss it up into this big arc and it falls short and stabs you. Or you know, You're doing this arc and it's not going over your shoulder it's you know falling short um, and you do that point A to point B right over the back of your shoulder your hands right there it's going to catch it every time uh, another thing peripheral vision make use of it um, you know you don't want to toss it and start looking for the knife trying to find it before you catch it, it ruins the whole thing keep your head as straight as possible use your peripheral vision use your eyes to track the knife's movement if you have to uh, if you do use that point A to point B thing, um, you don't even really have to use peripheral vision. It, you know, your hand's right there. You know where it's going. It's going right in your hand. It's going right over your shoulder, and your hand's right there. It's going to catch it every time, like I said. Um, another thing, the extension of your arm, you catch it behind your head. Um, I, I can't get much extension out of my arm, that's about as much as I can, but that's what I go for when I do the move. Get as far back behind my head as I possibly can. Um, it's not up here, it's not out here, it's not up here, it's back behind my head. That's the way you catch it. You get as much extension behind your head as you can. Um, catching styles, there's a couple different ones. Um, you can either kind of twist and dip your shoulder down and catch it like that, or you can keep your shoulder straight and catch it like that. It depends on your flipping style. Uh, Lucifer does it where he dips down and catches it, and it looks great when he does it because that matches his flipping style. My style of flipping is a little bit slower paced, so I think it looks better and more uh, fitting for me to just kind of keep my shoulders as straight as possible, as little uh, body movement as possible on the catch. And another big thing is posture. Um, on the catch. No safety hand. Once this arm tosses, your right arm's done. Drop it to your side in a relaxed position. Don't have it all tense or up here. Or, you know, you don't want to be catching in your hands all up here. Just loosely at your side. You don't want a tense or safety hand out here to catch it if you don't catch it right. So, as soon as your right arm's done, drop it down to your side. Catch it clean and do the move. Um, those are the tips I have for you. Uh, go out, learn the move, put it in your videos, give credit to Lucifer, have fun with it.